Hi there! Welcome to Storytime at the North Vancouver City Library. My name is Jessica McElroy and I'm a city councillor here at the city and I am also a trustee on the Library Board of Directors. Today I'm going to be reading Superpotamus by Ruth Paul. I chose this book because it reminds me of all the everyday superheroes we have here in the city. Up they pop, two fat ears, twitching, turning, trouble nears. They hear a whisper on the breeze, a distant cry, help me, please. He heaves a sigh and rolls his eyes, his yawn is pink as twilight skies. Then leaping from the mud he flies and soars across the top of us. Look out, it's Superpotamus. He sees the city stretched below. He's seen it sprout and spread and grow. He's been on call ever since, a great big airborne ambulance. A help me here, a save me there, he crashes down without a care. But those he rescues only stare, and never thank you, do they say, as Superpotamus zooms away. Come dusk, he's dozing on his bed, when something whizzes overhead. Doom and dread, a burning ball, it spits and sparks and starts to fall. He leaps to answer danger's call. Saving the metropolis is a job for Superpotamus. He plonks his hide on plumes of fire and stomps on flames till they expire. And when all sparks but one are out, he takes a breath and hears a shout. You silly lout, look what you've done. Our fireworks night had just begun. It seems they think that fire is fun. He can't make heads or tail of this, our puzzled superpotamus. He takes his leave, farewells our terse. But in the morning, things get worse. While snorting in the grass, he spies a bunch of beady, frowning eyes. They say we have a fire brigade, constables most unafraid, an ambulance to bring first aid. There really is no use to us to have a superpotamus. He can't believe his hairy ears. He can't block out the cries he hears. And superheroes bold and true must do what they were born to do. But now they say he brings distress when answering an SOS. They cannot cope with all his mess. He slumps down on his bottomus, downhearted superpotamus. A tear slips down his weathered cheek. A raindrop falls, the sky is bleak. The rain comes down, the river swells. The drains block up, the water smells. Through the downpour, calls are coming, drowning out the raindrops drumming. He blocks his ears, he's loudly humming. Help! The calls are slipping through. What should Superpotamus do? There's overflowing public loos, shrieks Mrs. Brown with soaking shoes. And Mr. Pitt cries, launch the fleet while sailing down the flooded street. Filthy water, gray and gritty, spews from pipes across the city. He must not wallow in self-pity. He knows that he can deal with this, for he's a Superpotamus. He dives into the foaming roar. He runs along the river floor. He shovels up the bags and bikes, courageously unblocks the pipes. He flings the junk, and with a sigh, the river starts to flow on by. He rises up and hears a cry. He's never heard the likes of this. Hooray for Superpotamus! Before too long, they're thanking him for such a bold, heroic swim. They say that he is kind and brave. The mess they've made is very grave. It's not them he needs to save. This river must be saved from us. We need a superpotamus. And so our hero, bold and true, revised what he was born to do. Now his muddy ears and girth are geared for guarding Mother Earth. Master of the smoke-free skies, champion of the butterflies, clap your hands and raise your eyes. He soars above the lot of us, our awesome superpotamus.